The McDonnell XP67, BAT, or Moonbat, was a prototype for a twin-engine, long-range, single-seat interceptor aircraft for the United States Army Air Forces. The project was cancelled after the sole completed prototype was destroyed by an engine fire. The specifications were very bold, encouraging manufacturers to produce radical aircraft that would outperform any existing fighter in the world at the time. The aerospace parts manufacturer McDonnell Aircraft, eager to begin manufacturing its own aircraft, responded to the proposal with drawings and specifications of the proposed Model I, which would be powered by an unusual geared drivetrain with a single Allison V3420 engine buried in the fuselage powering twin-wing mounted pusher propellers in the wings. Despite the apparent setback, Air Corps leaders were impressed by the nascent company's efforts, and granted McDonnell a $3,000 contract to re-engineer the aircraft. McDonnell engineers returned on 30 June 1940 with the Model II, which was also rejected, so it was reworked into the Model IIA, which emerged on 24 April 1941. The new design was powered by a more traditional layout, a pair of engines in wing-mounted nacelles with four-bladed propellers in a tractor configuration. The design was still quite ambitious. The design team tried to maintain a true airfoil section through the center fuselage, merge the rear portions of the engine nacelles with the wing, and radically fillet all edges of the fuselage and nacelles into the wings in an effort to reduce drag. McDonnell designers promised that the design would deliver a top speed of 472 miles per hour with a gross weight of 18,600 pounds, although the anticipated gross weight was soon increased to a somewhat more realistic 20,000 lb. On 30 September 1941, the USAAF granted McDonnell a $1,508,596 contract, plus an $86,315 fee, for two prototypes, a wind tunnel model, and associated engineering data. The production aircraft was intended to have a pressurized cockpit, an innovation at the time. The design demanded skin that was perfectly smooth and precisely shaped to maintain its laminar flow characteristics, mandating the development of new construction techniques, as the company had never produced an entire aircraft before. Wind tunnel testing uncovered problems with engine cooling airflow through the engine nacelles, which were never fully resolved. Difficulties were also encountered in obtaining engines, as wartime production demands hampered Continental's efforts to deliver running examples of the experimental XIV-1430 engines to competing aircraft test programs. The aircraft was fitted with 14-1430-1719 engines and General Electric D23 turbo superchargers but no pressurization equipment or armament was installed. On 8 December, the aircraft was damaged by fires in both engine nacelles, caused by a malfunction of the exhaust manifold slip rings. By 6 January 1944, the damage was repaired and the XP-67 made its first flight, which ended after six minutes due to engine trouble. After modifications were made to the engine installations, two test flights were carried out. On the fourth flight, the engine bearings burned out when the engines were accidentally overspeeded. The engines were only delivering 1,060 horsepower, well short of their promised 1,350 horsepower rating. Company founder Jim McDonnell, frustrated by engine procurement delays and the 11-1430's subpar output, began to campaign for funding to re-engine the prototype with a pair of Allison or Rolls-Royce piston engines augmented by auxiliary Westinghouse turbojets in the aft nacellas. Although McDonnell promised a very impressive 500 miles per hour top speed with the new power plants, the Army rejected the proposal, demanding more testing of the existing design. As a result of wind tunnel tests, the tailplanes were raised 12 in while the XP-67 waited for replacement engines. U.S. Army Air Force's pilots finally got to fly the aircraft on the 11th of May 1944, and judged the cockpit layout fair and ground handling satisfactory, but deemed the aircraft underpowered due to its poor initial rate of climb, slow acceleration, and long takeoff roll, particularly when operating with only one engine. The problems were serious enough that test pilots declined to test the XP-67 spin characteristics, fearing that a spin might be unrecoverable. Although the final flight test report was generally positive, the aircraft's maneuverability was deemed inferior to existing types such as the North American P-51 Mustang. Several problems were cured during the ensuing test flights, but the engines continued to be plagued by chronic overheating and deficient power output. On 6 September 1944, the starboard engine of the XP-67 caught fire during a test flight, and test pilot E.E. E. Elliott executed an emergency landing at Lambert Field in St. Louis, Missouri. Elliott escaped safely, but the blaze gutted the F.